Hey everyone, welcome back to our IPFS 101 series. And today we're going to be talking about content identifiers, otherwise known as CIDs. CIDs are fundamental to IPFS and how it functions and interacts and how you can actually view content. With a typical website URL, you might have google.com. With IPFS, you got CIDs. So it's almost like a URL, but actually a lot more. So let's get into it. But first off, what is a CID? Like we said earlier, CID stands for Content Identifier, and it's like a unique fingerprint for whatever content you share on IPFS. When you upload a file to IPFS, the IPFS node is going to run it through a special cryptographic algorithm, similar to something like SHA-256. And it's going to spit out a CID, which looks like this. It looks at every little detail of that file to produce that CID or that unique fingerprint. And it's mathematically done. So if you keep putting in the same file, you're gonna keep getting the same CID. Just like if you put in two plus two, you're always gonna get four as the answer. So for instance, if I have two text files, one that says hello world, and another one where I add an exclamation point to it, you're gonna get two totally different CIDs. And because of these superpowers, content that's on IPFS can be verified and rest assured that it has not been altered or changed. It is immutable. Beyond just the fingerprint, the CID also serves as the address to the content and how to find it. Instead of visiting a web page like google.com, you put in a URL that looks something like this ipfs colon slash slash and then the CID. This works if you're running an IPFS node. And if you're not, you can use something called a gateway, which we'll get into in another video. Pretty simply, that's what CIDs are, but what are the implications of CIDs? What does this mean for IPFS and why is it such a big deal? Well, the CID really does give IPFS some really cool abilities. One of those that we already talked about is verifiability. With this unique fingerprint-like system, content can't be tampered with or changed. This is especially valuable for NFTs, which typically are put on the blockchain and don't have enough room on the blockchain to store the data about the NFT or the image. And so it has to point to an off-chain location. And if you use a regular server location, then that can be changed. That's altered. It's centralized. But with an IPFS CID, you're ensured that that content is on IPFS and it's not going to be changed. It helps maintain that data integrity. CIDs also enable something called portability. And this is probably one of my favorite pieces about IPFS and CIDs. Essentially, since a CID is going to be the same no matter how many times you put the file through. If it's the same file, it's going to be the same CID. But well, once that content is on IPFS and has the CID, other people can take it and pin it themselves or download it and basically clone it. And it'll appear on all these different IPFS nodes. What this essentially means is that the data can go with you in a sense. So think of it this way. If I buy an NFT and I go to the blockchain and I see that there is a CID for the metadata and for the image, I can essentially copy those CIDs and pin them myself. So that way I can ensure that that data comes with me and I make sure that it stays on IPFS. Even if somebody else takes it down, it's with me. The data goes with me. This is something we've always loved at Pinata because it essentially allows you to take your ball and go home. You can use a service like Pinata, and if for some reason you need to switch or take your files with you to another service or your own local IPFS node, you just grab the CIDs and pin them there. And that also leads to the ability of IPFS to persist data. With that same concept of being able to take CIDs and pin them, essentially you have this ability for communities to really keep data on IPFS that they find valuable. It works just like artwork does. With a famous painting, there was a group of people that decided this painting is valuable. And so I'm going to put it in a museum. We're going to fund the museum. We're going to make sure that this is kept safe. And with IPFS, communities can do the same thing with any kind of data. It could be images. It can be important documents, text. So for instance, maybe something like the Bitcoin white paper, a document that's very important to the existence of crypto. That's something you want to keep on IPFS and that everybody values. So everyone should pin that, right? Makes sense. You can see this in action with NFT communities such as Board of Yacht Club. They have a provenance section with all the IPFS data so people can pin it themselves. So that's a wrap for what CIDs are, but let's recap. CIDs are content identifiers for files that you put on IPFS. They act as a unique and verifiable fingerprint for your file, as well as the address to the file. And they enable really cool stuff like portability and persistence. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions as we continue our IPFS 101 series on our channel. Until next time, happy pinning.